Hey, what's going on, everybody? Just do a little uh, sound check here, make sure everything's going okay. Make sure everybody can hear me talking right now. Uh, I'm trying to pull up this live chat. Give me a second. And there we go. Live chat. Get a big thumbs up or something, let everybody, so I can see you can hear me okay. Looks like I got like four people watching so far. Five people. Okay, there we go. Diego, I can hear. Thanks, man. I know last time I did a live stream, the audio wasn't working, and I had all kind of bugs I had to fix and work through to get that damn thing to work. But I'm going to give it like another minute or two before I really like go in deep to any kind of topics. I don't really have any topics tonight. I got a few kind of thoughts to talk about. So, uh, Let's see, first person in here who commented, it was Diego, um, I guess Diego Aguirre. Since you're the first person to comment, do you have anything you want to say to start off with in the comment section? Any roasting? Any positivity? Whatever you want. The floor is yours. Maybe checked out. I don't know. Let's see. Uh, it's been live a couple minutes now, I think, or about a minute. Go ahead, I guess. Let me start. Um, let's see. The hot topic right now, which seems like every other YouTuber has made a video over the past 24 hours about, has Adidas jumped over Jordan brand? And uh, I thought about making that, uh, that same kind of video myself, but I was like, eh. And I decided to just go live tonight, touch that topic for like just a second. Um, Adidas, have they jumped? Well, first of all, Jordan brand is a, is a subsidiary. I think I'm saying it right. Subsidiary of Nike Jordan brand itself. From what I understand, you know, it is a separate entity on paper kind of, but really, I mean, Jordan brand owns or Nike owns Jordan brand. So has Adidas jumped over Jordan brand? I mean, yes, in terms of, uh, I think Jordan brand, their market share right now is like, what, 13%. Adidas is 14%. And Nike is like 40%. So actually, if you add up Nike and Jordan combined, it's like 53% of the market share compared to Adidas at 14%. So there's still a lot to catch up with. But uh, let's see, shout out to Comedy's Best and Reup23, both in the house and commenting. Um, so... Adidas just jumped over a subsidiary of Nike, not Nike itself. Adidas has quite a way to go until they really get close to touching the overall like stock market price, the actual share of a Nike. So I know if you're like me, whenever you check your new videos that have gone up from your favorite YouTubers who do sneaker related stuff, uh, <laughs> this is like the topic for the past 24 hours on, on YouTube. And it's been discussed, debated, argued, and that's pretty much it. Nike jumped over a small Nike. Adidas jumped over a very, very small subsection of Nike. And, but is that huge news? Hell yeah, that's huge news. But, um, yeah, so that's my touching on that topic. And, um, I know I was talking with a couple of YouTubers today about Jordan brand and kind of like their vision for the future. And uh, several of us had a conversation on about, we kind of think Jordan brand in 2018, hopefully like right now, they're diving deep into their thought process, trying to figure out um, how to, how to rebound from a dismal 2017, but I don't really think you're going to see any huge changes from Jordan brand probably until like 2019. Cause it's going to take time to implement new strategies, new designs. It's going to take time just to restructure the vision for, uh, for Jordan. So that's not going to be like a quick thing. That's, that's going to take time. But, uh, I just hope that Jordan brand is relevant in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. 
but the rate they're going, it's not going to be very relevant. So, um, I don't know if anybody heard about this today, but YouTube announced a new thing called YouTube Sponsors. Very, uh, it's very interesting. So pretty much, it's just another way for YouTubers to make extra money. So what it basically is, from what YouTube has been saying, is subscribers to YouTube channels can pay to be a sponsor of a channel for $4.99 a month. And what that does, from what I understand, um, YouTube, if you comment on a video from your favorite YouTuber, your comment will be like highlighted and emojis and you get like special treatment for your comments. It's very strange. I know YouTube was saying this was because of they had a thing called YouTube, um, like paid videos, how which was very unpopular amongst most content creators. Let's say, like, I would, I never did, but let's say if I dropped a video and I would make you pay like a dollar to watch the video, which I think is a horrible idea because I'm not going to watch a video from a YouTuber because it might just be crap. So, pretty much, YouTube has scrapped that YouTube, like, pay per, not a, pay-per-view but a paper watching video and now it's youtube sponsors very unusual so uh in comment section has anybody actually heard about this yet besides me about youtube sponsorships where subscribers themselves can pay to sponsor uh, youtube channels so I, I don't know i'm not sure how well that's going to go over with subscribers because i can't see myself paying for 99 a month to watch, let's say, uh, let's say I watch Seth Fowler. I like Seth Fowler, but I just, okay, Seth Fowler or Boo Scott or anybody, I can't see myself paying almost five bucks a month just so that my comment gets highlighted and there's emojis and all kinds of crazy just to make myself stand out. And I guess underneath the videos, YouTube is going to like uh, post like, who is a sponsor for this channel for the $5 a month to kind of stand out as you're a supporter of the channel. Very strange, but if you haven't heard about this, research it. I don't know what YouTube's real end goal of doing this because I can't see people paying five bucks to sponsor a channel with nothing in return. You know, because let's say if a company sends me, let's say I had a company, let, let's say if Jack Daniels sent me this bottle for free, and, uh, you know, they're basically giving me like what, $18 for the cost of this bottle, 18 or $20. And um, in return, what they get is a review on you know, the, the YouTube channel of, you know, this Jack Daniels is very smooth. It doesn't have a, it doesn't have a huge bite to it, the taste of it, you know. So they get in return a honest review for giving out this. But as a, it, but if you sponsor a channel for five bucks a month, your payback is you get special emojis. So okay, I'm I'm done rambling about that. I just thought it's very strange. Okay, I just looked in the comment section for just a second. I saw the words breast milk. Okay, <laughs> I gotta read this. I only drink breast milk. I got a girl pregnant, or I get a girl pregnant every five to six months, wait until she starts producing milk, and then start pumping. I get the kid aborted six months into the pregnancy every time. <laughs> Dude, that's messed up. It's funny, but it's messed up. I kind of, <laughs> that's kind of funny. Um, Gage Macias is in the house. He was the first one that ever won a giveaway for my channel back when I had 500 freaking subscribers. I don't hear much from him anymore, seems like. He used to comment a lot, Gage, but you stopped. Feel free, though. Beater boxes. I want to touch on that topic, beater boxes. I get so many questions about beater boxes. You know, how can I get them? How how do you sell what's, what's in them? Exactly how does it work? Um, instead of doing, like, an all video on YouTube about, like, beater boxes, I'll just tell you about it. Pretty much soulsupremacy.com. They have a subscription service, a beater box membership. That's 150 bucks a month right now. 
but they're dropping prices come January 1st down to $50 a month, but it's hard to get into. And I'm not in that one, but I get my beater boxes from soulsteals.com, which is a subsidiary of Soul Supremacy. Same way that Jordan Brand is a subsidiary of Nike. Um, and I get mine from Soul Steals. So it, it pretty much it works. They drop 10 boxes every Sunday, beater boxes. Shoes range from brand new DS, used, some beat, some without boxes. Um, mostly brands are Nike and Jordan. You might get the occasional Adidas or, I don't know. It's mostly Nike and Jordan brands what you get. And uh, some shoes you might want to clean to get a little bit more money back whenever you sell them. That always helps. Um, best ways to sell them if you're selling the shoes that are used. Obviously, you can't sell them on StockX. They only sell new shoes. You can sell them used on eBay or used on the GOAT app. New shoes. I usually almost exclusively sell if they come in the in the beater box DS with original box, they go on stock X. So I mean it's a pretty easy concept. Um, it just might take a little bit of work. You might have to clean a few shoes, maybe. You might have to. Usually, honestly, not very many shoes you have to really eat, even clean up. So that's pretty much how beater boxes work. Soulsteals.com is twenty dollars a month, and boxes range from like three hundred up to like two thousand dollars. Depends on how deep you want to go. And just because you buy a box for a thousand doesn't mean you'll turn around and make, you know, two thousand back. Sometimes I buy boxes for three hundred bucks and I make back four fifty, sometimes five hundred, sometimes seven hundred. It's just all luck. Um any tips on building a sneaker YouTube channel? Shoe tube for new YouTubers. Good topic. Uh, it wasn't on my agenda, which my agenda is just pretty much stuff I have jotted down on my notes. Um, how to build your own sneaker channel or any channel for that matter, any channel. It's pretty easy. Honestly, the way I started out, um, I shot my videos on not this iPhone, but on an iPhone. Picture quality, sound quality won't be fantastic because, you know, it's 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 on a phone. But you don't need to go out and spend a thousand bucks on a camera, two thousand bucks on a camera and lens to start up a channel. You can just use your freaking phone. I actually know of several YouTubers who actually do YouTube as a career who actually use their phones exclusively for all their videos. There's several of them. Um if you actually watch some videos from uh, exploring type of videos, like uh, exploring with Josh, Mo Sarji, um, a couple other guys, a lot of those guys, when they go and they explore like abandoned buildings, abandoned places, haunted houses, lots of times they use their phones to shoot these videos. And these dudes are making six figures a month on YouTube shooting their videos on their phone. So start up a channel, you don't have to spend a whole lot of money. Don't do it because most channels, honestly, fail because it's very, very, very hard to get a subscriber base on YouTube. You've got to find a niche or you've got to, you've got to get a video or a video series that kind of hits big, that catches on. I lucked out and I had two videos that kind of went semi-viral Without those two, I would still be a channel of probably like a thousand subs. Um, there's like, I've got a couple friends who have some sneaker channels who, who are excellent. They've been doing it for like two, three years, but they've only got like a thousand subs, 2000 subs. And it really sucks for them because it's just, they haven't got that viral video yet to draw in people from, uh, from outside. And here's actually one thing right here. Oh, I just saw a comment. Mike Rich. Yeah, I know. Mike Rich, he records most all of his mall vlogs on his freaking cell phone. Uh, Dan D was doing all his mall vlogs on his cell phone. I'm not sure if he still does. But yeah, I mean, there's many YouTubers who record all their videos on their freaking cell phones. And they're making four, six, eight thousand dollars $8,000 a month in revenue. It's crazy. Um, but I was going to touch on one topic. Um, I've been contacted by a few people over the past, say, 
can you check out my channel? Give me some feedback on videos. Uh, they, you know, I've been told I've been doing YouTube for two years. I've got like 150 subs. What's wrong? And one problem with certain people, if their channel's not growing very quickly, sometimes it's not your content. It's not your camera. It's not your backdrop. It's not your editing. It's not your topics. It's you, the person, the personality. Um, I've seen that many a times. Uh, like, you don't want to tell the person, like, it's so hard to tell a person, truthfully, you know what? There's a reason why you've only got 150 subs after two years. It's because your personality sucks. You're not fun to listen and to watch. I mean, I, I'm not saying I'm Mr. Personality, like I'm, you know, awesome or anything, but from an outside looking in from somebody else, um, if your channel's not growing and, 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 and you've been doing it for several years, you might want to look at yourself and think it might be me. You know, you might just almost need to not take an acting class, but practice with a new personality. I mean, hell, just be fake, I guess. Uh, many YouTubers on camera are fake as hell. Once the camera gets turned off, they're a different person. But like me, what you see on camera is the way I act in person. Only thing that's fake about me is on camera, I tone down my cussing very, very, very low. Hardly any because YouTube pulls, they pull your revenue if you cuss too much. So um, that's all. But in person, I'm not like a big cusser, but I cuss much more in person. But on YouTube, that's the only thing that's fake about me is I watch my language on YouTube. Because one, I try to keep it family friendly, all ages, and uh, you cuss too much, your videos get demonetized. Ask Name Brand about that. <laughs> Name Brand had to cut, he had to tone down his cussing because he was getting all of his videos demonetized from uh, all, all of his F-bombs and everything. But, um, oh, you said, uh, I have a camera, just wanted to know some tips. Uh, some tips, pretty much, um, some tips how to start a sneaker kind of a channel. Um, talk about your own shoes. Talk about what you like about sneakers. Talk about your history of sneakers, what your knowledge is. Um, if, if like you're totally stumped on what to talk about, go to a website like sneakernews.com that, you know, talks about like an article. Let's say if you're kind of stumped on a new topic, go to sneaker news. They'll say the Jordan 13 breads coming out, you know, in two months, of course, not now, but you know, it's coming out in two months, do a video over that saying, Hey, new shoes coming out. Here's pictures of it. Here's the price point. We're looking at certain kind of materials on it. You know, like you can find topics and um, YouTube is pretty much, it's just a big piggyback. Once one person does it, you'll see 20 other people do the exact same damn thing. I'm guilty of it too, but there's sometimes you do the same topics because the same topic arises and we all do like the videos at the same time, not knowing that everybody's doing the same damn video. You know, you can't really help that. Oh, let's see. I've got some questions from past people on my phone. I've written down in like my notes section. Um, let's see. What Adidas Jordan collab would you want to see and which model for the shoes would you want them in? What Jordan collab would I like to see? Um, hell, I don't know. Jordan collab, I would like to see Jordan collab. I know like one thing that the hype beast would freaking love a Jordan collab with Louis Vuitton. Can, can you imagine that? Um, so I guess let's let's do a dream hype beast collab for all the hype beasts out there. A Louis Vuitton Jordan brand collab on a Jordan one, Jordan eleven. God, that might be crazy. And 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 Adidas collab. Um, same thing. Let's just do a let's just do a hype beast collab. Uh, people would kill to see a Yeezy V two Bape collab. That'd be freaking insane. Um, let's see, why don't, why don't you vlog? Cause honestly, like 
my my life isn't very exciting i don't think um I mean, I, I could vlog, you know, like I could go out and go to sneaker stores and, um, I guess drive around Indianapolis and record myself talking while I drive, I guess. I don't know. I just, some, it's very, I, the people who vlog full time, kind of like boost God, Ted, who vlogs full time, he has a lot of ideas, a lot of drive in order to vlog almost every single day and always have new topics and fresh content. Vlogging is, is, is a challenge. And I, I can admit like, like I would suck at vlogging because I just, I'm kind of boring, I think. Um, yeah. I mean, I've, I've done, a, I've done vlogs in the past, not very many. And I thought they were always kind of boring. But I might try more in the future. I've actually thought about it. I've vlogging is kind of like the new form of like sneaker YouTube is vlogs. And um, like you see a lot of channels now, they're progressing more into like supreme bape kind of hype beast channels. You see a lot of sneaker YouTubers now. Uh, video after video is just supreme this, supreme that. I don't wear that crap. But I probably could do some more vlogs that might help my channel grow so i'll actually jot down to my list of maybe try to do those more in the future cowboy no, i'm not a cowboys fan a colts fan i'm from mindy even though the colts this year man they're they're freaking bad oh and two um the first week was well, they played uh the rams the rams just destroyed the colts it was it was embarrassing and last week they played drawn a blank, but uh, they almost kind of won. They they uh, traded Philip Dorsett for the backup quarterback out of New England. Can't remember the dude's name, like Bissell or Bissett or something like that. You know he he's not great, but you know he he did okay. He's better than than that Tolzian kid that played week one who was just god awful. Um. But yeah, Colts. Yeah, without luck, they stink. Yeah. Yes. Without Andrew Luck and the offensive line, it needs revamped some fierce. Cause even if Luck comes back this season, he's just gonna get beat up. Cause that that offensive line, they don't they don't protect the quarterback well. Let's see. Do you go to any sneaker events? I never have. I honestly thought about going to the Atlanta sneaker con. I think it's coming up this weekend. I thought about it a couple weeks ago, thinking about it, but I am going to a wedding this Saturday. So that kind of those plans fell through. Um, I was thinking about it just to kind of like pop up and, you know, shoot some vloggage. But yeah, I got to go into a wedding instead this Saturday. So I'll make the best of it. Try to drink as much beer as I can there. But uh, I'm going to go to a sneaker con either late this year or next year. I guarantee you next year by this time, mark my words, next year you'll see me at a sneaker con before next year at this time. And uh, like I actually do want to go to some sneaker cons and kind of just see the culture in person. So, yeah. Yeah, Jacoby Brissett, that, that's, that's the dude's name. They played against, that's right, the Cardinals. I'm drawing a total blank. Yeah, the Cardinals. Cardinals are actually a good, a pretty good team, I think. The Colts just, I think the Colts didn't play well. The Cardinals just played like crap last weekend. Tampa Bay Bucks, eh, eh. I mean, you got Winston, but eh. Can you give me a shout out? What's up, Wung Lu? I guess I said it right. Shout out, buddy. Let me scroll these comments for a second, see if I missed anything. Yeah, vlogging would be cool. Yeah, I I really should try to do some more vlogs. Um, I know I thought about hooking up with some other YouTubers around the city here. I know like Jason Donner, he used to do a lot of videos, but he just kind of stopped like six months ago. I think he's kind of got burnt out, I think. But I thought about linking up with him and doing some vlogs and there's another YouTuber here named uh, QL Hala. And I thought about maybe 
trying to link up with a with a couple guys and kind of like form kind of like an indie crew almost, you know, like an indie sneaker crew or something. C man zero 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 one three. How can you? How cheap you think I can get a pair of Yeezys? Well, if you can find a beat up pair that's been worn two hundred fifty seven times, the price will get cheaper. So if you want a cheap pair of authentic Yeezys, you better find a pair that's that's a beater pair. But even those will go for a few hundred bucks. Or hell, you like you can still buy those triple white V twos for like five hundred ish. A little bit less, a little bit more. Like those aren't that bad in price, at least. Still, let's see. How about college ball? I don't watch any college football. I don't know. I've never really been intrigued by college football. Actually, the one thing that turned me off about college football the most, I've never really watched it my whole life. But if I had to say I have a favorite team, it, it'd be Notre Dame. Um, you know, local team to my state. I'd probably say my favorite team would be Notre Dame. But um, I don't – I say I don't – I rarely watch college football. And here's one of the reasons why. When I was stationed down at Fort Benning, Georgia, when I was in the Army, Georgia – or Fort – Benning there touches the state line of Georgia and Alabama like they touch. So down there, it is crawling with Alabama fans, uh, Alabama and Crimson Tide fans. And all I heard and saw was freaking roll tide this, roll tide that, roll tide, Crimson, blah, blah, blah. The T-shirts, the the people, if you go to, to like the – like the Walmart there, the whole Walmart's like decked out with Roll Tide, Roll Tide. And I got so sick of seeing Alabama crap at the gas stations, at Walmart, shopping everywhere, that I pretty much have a hatred for Alabama because I, I, I got so tired of seeing Roll Tide crap. So it's kind of like the being stationed at Fort Benning, Georgia kind of burnt me out on college football. Just got, I got so tired of the freaking Alabama fans. Couldn't, yeah. Anyway, let's see. Let's see. Alabama, Auburn fans. I was stationed at Fort Stewart. Man, Stewart was nice. I tried to get stationed at Stewart because that's right next to, um, there's an island, like a small island right next to Stewart. I can't think of what it was called. But uh, can't think. But I, Stewart was outside of Savannah, Georgia, if I remember correctly. If I remember correctly, and Savannah was beautiful. But yeah, I tried to actually PCS to Fort Stewart, but um, didn't work. Alabama and Auburn fans. I was stationed, or I just read a comment. Uh, let's see, StockX legit for me to purchase sneakers. Yeah, StockX. Yes, at Tybee Island. StockX is legit. Yeah. Don't don't worry. Of course, once in a blue moon, once out of every two thousand pairs, there might be a pair that slips through that you know is a UA. It happens to every sneaker consignment shop once in a blue moon. But ninety nine point nine nine hundred percent almost that your shoes will be fine from StockX. Yeah, Tybee Island. Yeah, Tybee Island. Uh, my wife and I went there a couple times. Uh, because when you're in the military, about once a month, you get a four-day kind of a holiday. Um, and uh, what was it? You were allowed to travel no farther than 250 miles away from your base. At least my company, that was the rural or my battalion. And Savannah was like 200 miles or so, I think, away from Fort Benning. So I went up to or east over to Savannah several times when I'm, when I was out there stationed at Fort Benning, Georgia. And I went down south of Panama City Beach because Panama City Beach was like exactly 250 miles from Fort Benning. And uh, yeah, I went down to Panama City Beach quite a bit for the long weekends and um, time off from the Army. Which branch would you prefer more? Okay, here's where the truth comes out. I actually wanted to go Air Force originally, um, but I didn't pass all of their qualifications for the Air Force because um, 
one at that time I was too old to go active and that, what was it? Um, there were some other, other personal things, let's just say. So the air force, they told me no. So then I went to the army and, uh, they're like, yep, we'll sign you up. So pretty much went down to a, a recruiter. Two weeks later, I went down to what they call MEPS, which is the military en enlistment processing station. If I remember correctly, MEPS and, uh, Picked my MOS, signed a contract, picked a bonus or a thousand dollar signing bonus or enlistment bonus, I should say, and shipped off to basic training at Force of Oklahoma four months later. Yeah. And that was many years ago. Anyway, whatever. But yeah. Um, but in terms of like, would I have been happy in the Air Force? Probably not because, eh. You don't get to kill people in in the Air Force. You know, you don't get to have boots on the ground and get to actually get hit by grenades and stuff and throw grenades and get shot at and shoot back, you know. So if you like combat, if you like to almost like kill people legally, I guess, go Army or Marines. Yeah. Cool Army stories. I got a lot of I got a lot of stories. Lots actually. I actually thought about doing a um, a series called what was it? Like life hacks from the army life. Like one of the life hacks that you will learn in the army is you learn how to drink. Like pre army, I wasn't a big drinker. Post army, and even to this day, I love my alcohol. The army they make you into drinkers because pretty much you're emotionally depressed. You drink, if you're stressed out. You drink, you have anxiety, you drink, you have any problems, you drink, you drink just because you can drink. Alcohol is a huge problem in the military, a huge problem, but it's not a big deal really because it's like self yourself medicating yourself to drive on with the mission. So if anybody's actually served in the army, you know, what I'm talking about, where the army is full of alcoholics. Like, yeah, yeah. A thousand dollar, yep. Uh, my thousand dollar enlistment bonus was because, what was it? Um, I had, or what was it? I went in as a private first class PFC E3, if anybody knows, due to my college that I had before the army. Because before I enlisted, I actually had an associate's degree. So I had enough college in me to, um, I had, and associates, if you enlist as a specialist, you have to actually have a bachelor's. I only had an associate, so I went straight to PFC when I enlisted. And because of the college, um, I got the $1,000 enlistment bonus. But that was back whenever they weren't given huge bonuses for your job. And uh, yeah, I kind of got screwed on it. Screwed. But actually, I read... What was it? I think the Army Times. I'm sure I'm probably boring half the people right now, but uh, the Army Times a couple months ago, where there the Congress was was it Congress? I think they were talking about um, since the military is actually not up to strength right now, especially the Army and Marines aren't up to strength. That I think it was Congress. They talked about um, making or whatever it was fund or giving the funds to where prior service could re-enlist for up to a $90,000 in re-enlistment bonus. And I told my, my wife about that and she was like, damn, Clint, you need to lose some weight. You need to get back in shape. We, we need that $90,000. And I was like, no, 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 no. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't want to go back into the army again. no, already already did my time but uh that's crazy so i don't know if that's actually gone through yet but they were talking ninety thousand dollar reenlistment bonus up to 90 grand freaking crazy let's see what's your twitter um at franchise kicks the at sign franchise kicks instagram's the same thing at franchise kicks um there's actually direct direct links in the description box to this video they should be there right now where you can click 
yeah, it should be there for you right now. You can click, and it'll take you to my Twitter. It'll click, take you to my Instagram, and make sure you subscribe to this channel. Let's see. George Bush is making it rain with those bonuses. <laughs> I actually enlisted right during the beginning when Obama was president, and bonuses at that time, they they weren't very good. When I got out of the Army, um, I could have re-enlisted. I think they offered me, it wasn't much. It was like $4,000 re-enlistment re bonus, I think. It, it wasn't much. And I said, hell no, because uh, pretty much uh, I got out. I got my VA disability. I'm rated at 60% disabled by the VA due to injuries I sustained with the army. So I get a monthly check from uncle Sam, the VA every month for like $1,168 tax free for, for the rest of my life. So it's like, okay, do I reenlist for $4,000 bonus or do I get like $15,000 a year tax free to get out of the army? So, um, it was a no brainer. Clint ain't got pants on. Actually, I do have pants on. But if, if I didn't, <laughs> it wouldn't be a big deal. Nobody know. So, um, but yeah, I I do want to make some some videos more about like army videos, talking about army stories. I got a lot of stories. Nothing like I don't have any stories like freaking, you know, like a. Uh, uh, American sniper kind of stories. I, I wasn't anything special. You know, I don't have any, I used to be a seal. I used to be Rangers. I used to be special forces, blah, blah, blah. That wasn't me. I wasn't anything special. I was just a grunt. So let's see. Let me scroll up to the comments. If I missed anything, you got a booger. Uh, if I do, oh, well, that's fine. Let's see. Look up the VCHL. It's on my pinned tweet. There are more picks in the replies. I don't know what's going on. <coughs> I see. Hypebeast TV. <laughs> I live in the class six. I remember every Friday, class sixes on post, at least with the army at Fort Benny, class sixes were freaking packed. So anybody. Popeye people are saying, what's, what the hell is a class six? Class six is pretty much what the army calls a liquor store. I have no idea why they call it class six. I'm sure I, I, I used to know at one time years ago, but now, but yeah, we used to call it class six. It was always a final formation on Friday and people would shoot down to class six to get their cases of beer and get their Jack Daniels and and always get plenty of rippets because if you've been in the military, you know how, you know that rippets are pretty much our, our lifeblood at times. Rippets and alcohol. Well, rippets deployed, even some stateside, uh, but stateside beer is our water source. Beer is our water buffalo. We can see your butt crack in the poster. Review. If you can see it, that'd be funny as hell. Like I wouldn't pull my pants up. I, I would let you see it. That, that's kind of funny. But I know it's not true. But if it was, it'd be kind of funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Timothy Lebansky, the Navy 11s. There, yeah, there is a rumor going around right now that the Jordan 11 navies have been canceled completely. The drop's been canceled. They were scheduled to come out November 11th, I think it was. I think. And supposedly today it leaked out that it's canceled. If that's true, hasn't been verified yet. It's just been discussed. I actually thought about doing a short video about that tomorrow, just talking about it, if I can find some more news about it, because obviously, you know, that's some pretty big news. And that calls into question all these there's several youtubers who got early pairs one youtuber got his back in like july or august a couple more have gotten them and it's like well the release was canceled no pairs have been released no stores have pair 
So these YouTubers, I really highly doubt their pairs are authentic. Especially the YouTuber got his back in the summertime. So I'll be very interested to hear them explain, try to explain how their pair is authentic now since the possible the drop has been canceled completely, which means nobody's getting pairs. Not not even Jordan Brand athletes are be getting pairs. So I doubt as a YouTuber from like, you know, Idaho is going to have a pair over like, you know, Chris Paul. So no alcohol downrange. Yep. If you're in the military, downrange, sandbox, hellhole, whatever you want to call it, no freaking alcohol. Like I said, that's when you live off of freaking rippets or whatever kind of energy boost that you can find. But uh, at least we had a lot of rippets. I got the beers coming up on me. Army food in any good? Eh, it kind of varies. Um, Army food any good? I've never had a bad... I've never had bad army grits. It doesn't matter if they're thicker or watery. You can't really make bad grits. Um, their chicken is always under, at least at Fort Benning. Uh, Fort Sill, food was better. I was actually, the best food, I was actually stationed for a short while at a Shepherd Air Force Base down there and outside of Lawton, Texas. Shepherd Air Force Base, at least in the Air Force, their food was immaculate like they actually had hired chefs like chefs to make the food for the service members freaking you'd walk up and say i want chicken fingers and they would fry up chicken fingers or you want prime rib there was prime rib is insane but you go to um the army <laughs> you walk up and said i would like uh chicken fingers and a prime rib they look at you and they're like man today's salisbury steak day here you go. Even though, you know, it's not true, but let's see. I know at, we had uh, Taco Tuesday a lot. That was that was a pretty safe food to eat, Taco Tuesday. Um, Yeah. So, I mean, the food's okay. It, it kind of depends on what branch you're in. I think it depends on what base you're at. Like Fort Sills Food, was, which is based in Oklahoma, um, Yeah, their, their food was better than Benning, at least from what I had. Their burgers were cooked a little bit better. Food was a little bit better. Eggs were better. Fort Benning eggs were watery pieces of crap. Let's see. Air Force Base had the best defects. I was only on one Air Force Base, but yeah, man, their defects were just insane. Let's see. Victor, why did the picture look cropped? Do you know what you're talking about? Let's see. Love your content. Just subscribe. Thanks, Compton Most One in 12. Subscribe. I got over 300 videos, some rant videos, some drama videos, all kinds of good stuff. The food is edible. Eh, <laughs> food's edible. Um, Army food sometimes, at least me, it actually, it gave me, it gave me diarrhea. Lots of diarrhea, I think. Or might have just been my body. I don't know. Let's see. What time is it? 12. I've been live for about, what, 40 minutes or so? A little bit longer. Let's see. Got any questions on my phone? I see any questions in the chat right now. I think. Let's see. What is your favorite, or what shoe is your favorite 2017? My favorite 2017 so far, I have loved the Yeezy V2 Zebras. Um, I, I, that's just a beautiful shoe. It's freaking awesome. And I really, really liked the triple black, uh, Japan NMD boosts. Those things are freaking sweet. And actually I really liked the Saucony collab that they did with YouTubers like a DJ Dell's pair is freaking sweet. Sneakerhead in the Bay, his pair is freaking sweet. Um, I wish I wish I would have gotten Hess kicks pair, but my size sold out before I could get it. But honestly, that collab that the YouTubers did with Saucony, there were some really freaking sweet-ass colorways. And I wish could have gotten more. 
Let's see. I think I answered that question. Yeah, fair shoot 2017. Yeah, so yeah, like I said, zebras, NMDs, Saucony collabs, and there's not really a whole lot from Jordan brand 2017. I've really been that that impressed with honestly. There's not much. The Royal Ones were pretty much about the only Jordan shoe in 2017 where I'm like, that's a nice shoe. Let's see. Seriously, can you come back? And what's your absolute favorite pair of kicks you currently own? As is a tie. My all-time favorite pair in the history of our sport is the Air Jordan 11 Concords. That's that's my favorite shoe for over 20 years now. 21 years, I think. And call me a hype beast, but the Yeezy 350 Turtle Doves. That shoe is just, I love that shoe. It's its one of my babies. And uh, got two pairs, one I wear, one that's on ice still. And I hope they restock again because I, I would love to get some more pairs. And what sucks is that shoe when first came out was so limited that most people, they, they missed out. I missed out. I bought both of my pairs for a resale price when they came out. I think I paid like $900 and like $850. Of course, now the prices are double that. But uh, I hope they restock. It's been a rumor now for over a year that they're restocking. I think I think they're going to. There's too much money left on the table not to. I mean, if they restock the Turtle Doves, the Moon Rocks, and the Oxford Tans today, and they made twice as much, they would all sell out immediately. It wouldn't matter, you know. And they'd still be worth a lot more than what the retail price was. So, yeah. Should I purchase some Grape Fives on StockX? They're a good price, but not sure anymore. The Grape Fives. Drink some beer before I get into Grape Fives. If you watch my channel, my YouTube channel, you've seen me bash the Grape Fives on multiple videos. The Grape Fives, the leather quality on Grape Fives are freaking terrible. It is a hard, plasticky type of leather. Okay, I think my I think I have lost my connection. Bear with me a second. Let me see if I can pull myself up on my phone because right now my sc screen is black. I'm not sure if anybody can hear me though. Hold on, give me a second. Right now my screen is showing black. But it still says I'm live, but I need to find out. Bear with me. Dang it. Is it there? Can people see me? Can they hear me? Okay. My my video is back. Okay. So disregard that. I'm not sure what that was about. My total YouTube screen went black. I couldn't see anything. The chat was frozen. My Google Hangouts, I checked. It actually said that I lost connection, but I was still live, but I had no connection. So 
I don't disregard that. So if you're uh, watching this on replay, um, sorry about that. <laughs> yes, I am ate up. I think that was my wife. I had a little blip right there. So it's like I lost about four live watchers when I went down. Charlie, what was what was I talking about? Let's see. We got some actually. I see some new names in here that weren't here back before I lost my connection. Uh, let's see, Riley Lang Lang Lolis. I think your name sounds familiar from my comment section. Grabber Orange, Soggy, Pugo. Let's see, in a G. Jason Hayes, so on. Oh, yeah, great fives. Yeah, the great fives. Um, bad quality leather. Yeah, I think, actually, I remember. My last comment I said was whenever you wear them, the, sho the shoes will crease so bad on, on the toe box that it'll cut off the circulation to your toes, literally. And your toes will turn purple. So I had great fives, but I sold mine after I wore them four or five times back when they came out. Was it 2014 or 2013? But of course, if if you love the shoe, buy it. You know, me personal preference. I literally like I lost circulation in my toes from that pair because the leather on them is so freaking horrible. Just that was one of the last. There, I think that was the year before they started doing the remastered series where the leather got a little bit better because uh, so many Jordan shoes, the quality on those things were getting just bad i mean you gotta think about they drop the uh the white infrared sixes leather on those things are like a hard-ass leather the sport blue sixes hard-ass leather the great fives hard-ass leather that was all the same year like the quality just went to crap but yes purple toes will match the great fives that is a positive so always put a positive twist on the negative that that is a good tip by grabber orange yes <laughs> let's see um you say just energy just kind of sneakers where can i learn more about this about the shoe game honestly if you want to learn more about the shoe game watch youtubers um i'm not saying watch me exclusively watch channels like hess kicks uh watch uh mike rich dan d dj dells watch seth fowler just win even if you want the younger kind of hype beast people watch just win blake linder blazing dairy um if you okay if if you're like me and like your older crowd uh watch people like i guess me watch uh oh it's teddy or the boost god watch mike rich watch Jumpman bostic if you want like the older perspective of shoes if you want the 20 year old perspective i say seth fowler even though i really like seth his channel is freaking popping watch seth fowler tony d2 wild bold rc i'm leaving out so many people Cousteau, uh kai somar uh mike or a sneaker life if you're into hype beast stuff like i said earlier blazendary just win blake linder uh yeah so nightwing yes that, that is one too that's very good it's, nightwing could be more for like the 20 year old and, and up mj 23 dan yes he's also good so yeah um who asked me that who asked me energy there are direct links below hit me up on twitter on on instagram or e email and and like I will actually type out all these names to you to check out videos. Um, just hear it pretty much from personal experience. If you want to learn about sneakers and the culture, you will you will learn more from watching a YouTuber than you will reading an article on Google about how it was to buy a Jordan 13 back in 1997. You know, you'll learn more from a YouTuber. Fomer Simpson. Let's see. Yeah, I'm forgetting a bunch of guys yeah that was actually a good question like, i got also if, if anybody if you have any kind of questions or even, i guess personal questions always feel free to hit me up on instagram twitter email yeah 
Rob Dalla, his channel is shut down for like the 40th time now, and I don't think it's coming back. But yeah, Rob Dalla's channel was good if you wanted the inside workings on how like the counterfeit world was. His was awesome. But I don't think Rob's coming back. I'd be shocked if he was because he put up with, with a lot of crap from the counterfeiters in China were the ones who, from what I understand, were trying to shut his channel down. They were making like fake complaints about him, making in, invalid like copyright claims and hate speech. This is just, just, just what I heard. So I think he got tired of it and pretty much just said he's not going to fight anymore to get his channel back. So, yeah. Let's see. It's been almost an hour now, even with my little, I lost my connection for a couple minutes. Any last questions? I think I covered all my topics I want to talk about tonight, which was uh, Adidas jumping over Jordan brand. If, if you missed that, the first probably five, 10 minutes of this video was about that. So if you're watching this live, I'm going to post this up on YouTube once I end it and you can go back and rewatch my first half of it or whatever that you missed. So yeah. So I covered all my topics. Um, <laughs> Scoop li li living that. Yeah, I, I, me and Scoop had our differences and pretty much, I think we didn't really work them out. We just don't talk, you know? So if you, of course, people will be like, what's the Scoop thing? Well, I have videos about Scoop and but at least Scoop now, he's back on track. He's doing well. His channel's growing. He's doing legit business. You know, he's cut ties with the people in his life that were doing him wrong. So he's doing better. Did you get a Super Nintendo Enter Entertainment Series pre-order? Yes, I did. I got one from Best Buy. Uh, like, they dropped their pre-orders, like, at 2 a.m. or something like that, 3 a.m., like, a month ago. And I was up still, and I grabbed one. So... Yeah, I got one. At ease. Mm. Let's see, ready for no mercy? Eh, I think it's going to be an okay pay-per-view. I'm not really that, that excited about it, honestly. I think a lot of matches are just kind of forced. Like the Cena and Reigns match, it's, just, it's a forced match just to create some kind of hype buzz or something. Well, how, how did I know about the Best Buy pre-order? Um, okay, I've talked about this before with, with shoes. What you can do, use Best Buy's website, um, Walmart, Target. Use your, your Google Chrome. Go to like the Best Buy like NES page, Super NES page, and there is um, a YouTube, no YouTube, Google Chrome page extension monitor where you can set it to monitor that page. So whenever the Super Nintendo went live, my computer makes this dinging sound. And then I knew that it was live. So I I, I, I heard the ding. I, I went to the website and it was live. I bought one. Then I tweeted, then I tweeted about it on Twitter. Tweeted about it on Twitter. Tongue tie. I tweeted about it on Twitter and people were able to get them. So... Um, that is how I got mine was through the Google Chrome page monitor extension. You monitor a page that isn't live yet. Once the page goes live, Google Chrome will ding and let you know the page is live. The product is live. The shoe is live. The system is live. Whatever you're trying to buy. Tip of the day. Hi, Beast TV. Do you follow bodybuilding? I used to back in like the early 2000s back during the Jay Cutler and the Ronnie Coleman, whenever they battled at the Olympias for like seven straight years, Ronnie Coleman beat Jay Cutler year after year. And finally Jay beat him. And then Ronnie retired and, you know, Jay took, took, took the throne, lost it to Dexter, Dexter Jackson, then took it back. And then basically lost it to Phil Heath. And from what I understand, Phil's won the Olympia, like what, eight, seven, eight, six, nine, six something years straight now. So it's awesome. Oh, let's see. If I don't cop Yeezys this round, I'm going to become the anti-boost God. You'll get them eventually. 
if you miss them, just be patient, be persistent, and you'll get a pair eventually. Don't you know? And if you want a pair bad enough, go into your shoe collection, pull out five, four or five pairs, six or whatever, sell them and buy a pair of the Yeezys or trade for them, you know? Are the blues dropping this fall? I I keep hearing so many crazy stuff about the V2s. I hear that the Bluga 2.0s are postponed or November, then December, then October. Then I hear that the uh, the urine yellow ones are coming out in October. And I don't think anybody really knows what colorways are actually dropping the next three months. I think it's just all speculation right now because the colorways keep changing. Like, all we know is there is one colorway dropping in October. I can't remember the exact date. I'm not sure. But there is a colorway dropping. It could be the uh, urine yellows, the 2.0 belugas, the what they call them, the blue tints. There's some other colorways, too, that we've seen samples of, like a, a maroon colorway. You know, it, 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 it'll be something, you know. Okay. Fight. I have no idea who GGG and Canelo is. I, I heard about the fight, but I don't follow boxing at, at all. And these two guys, I had never heard of their names until like last week. So I have no idea who these guys are. I am more of a mixed martial arts, like, you know, like a UFC guy than a boxing guy. I've never really been into boxing. Off-white Jordan 1s, hell no. I don't want them. I think they're ugly as hell, but the resell those things are crazy. So if, okay, if I had to choose between the off-white Jordan 1s or the Beluga 2.0s to resell, Jordans. If I had to choose to keep the Beluga 2.0s. Yeezy Mafia, Yeezy Mafia, they're right about half of the time. About half. Um, they're wrong half of the time. So no, nobody really knows who is the Yeezy Mafia, where they get their sources from, but they do have some kind of an inside source with Adidas or with Kanye or something. They have some kind of a source that's only half or is only right about half of the time. So, I mean, Yeezy Mafia, are they overhyped? I don't understand why people buy their, buy their merchandise. I don't get it. I guess because it says Mafia and has the Yeezy on it, maybe. I don't know. But yeah, Nike Yeezys. I want the 2.0, the Platinums, but I'm not paying thousands and thousands of dollars for them. Nike, eventually, they will. I They'll redo the uh, retro that line again. I mean, they'd be stupid not to because Nike owns the silhouette. Kanye really had no part of making the shoe they they just slapped his name on it that's kind of why kanye left him because he wanted to be more involved in the actual production of the shoe nike didn't really let him have much of a say so nike owns the shoe so all, all so they can redrop them but they just have to call them something else like um let's see I'm trying to think of a shoe that has re-retro but the name changed okay let's just say like uh with Fila, with the Grant Hills. When they came out uh, originally back in 1994, I think it was, they were called the Fila Grant Hill Ones. Well, the contract with Fila and Grant Hill had been done for 20 years. So when Fila, when they redropped them, they just named them the Fila like 95s, I think. Yeah. So it's the exact same shoe, but they're not having to pay Grant Hill. So, so they just call them the, you know, the Fila. 95 so nike could redrop the yeezy twos but just call them something else they can call them the nike you know collab two you know like they they can do that because they own the shoe they they own the entire shoe not kanye so anyway yes i want some nike yeezy two platinums Oh, let's see. Been on for an hour. People are still in here. So I got 27 people watching. It's awesome. Army combatives. I am at level one army combatives. Did I go above a level one? No. Yes, I'm a level one. I think there's only like two people in my whole company that was a level two 
and then I had one person that was level three as like an instructor status. Yes, perfect example. Three ZZI, the Kamikaze twos. Yes, they they removed Sean Kemp's name from the shoe and re or they retroed them as the Kamikazes and removed all branding of Sean Kemp. So 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 they don't have to pay Sean Kemp. But they can redrop the shoe. Same way with the Yeezy One and the Yeezy Twos. Nike will redrop them eventually, and just take off any kind of branding to, to do with Kanye or with Yeezy. It'll be the exact same shoe. So yeah, it'll happen eventually. So yeah. So it's been about an hour now. I think I'm gonna wrap it up. Okay, since people actually watch this live, live stream, I can't talk, live stream, let me do a quick giveaway. If anybody in here wants me to do, to do a quick live giveaway for a live watcher, give me a hell yeah in the comment section. I'll wait. Okay. So let's see. I have my franchise kicks official like t-shirts are uh, printed, produced, sold, and shipped by Amazon.com. You know, I own the rights to the shirt, but they're like my official distributor. Let's say. So let me give away. Let me give away a t-shirt. How am I gonna do this? Let's see. Let's see. Let's do a comment. Um, sneaker, let's do a sneaker related comment. Let's see. I, if you're watching this live, let me do a topic that we touched on earlier tonight. Uh, let's see. Somebody asked me, what is my favorite shoe? I gave two shoes. The first person to comment what shoe, one of the two shoes will get a free t-shirt go boom concord 11 and turtle doves victor chow quick and hit both of them bam okay live in the comment section right now victor chow um type in your email address so i can email you because once i close this this live uh, broadcast, the chat's going to disappear on me, and I have no way to contact you. And people will come out of the woodwork posing as you. So right now, Victor Chow in the comment. Okay, let me take a screen, a picture of it. I should say. Boom. Okay, I'm gonna hit you up right there. Once I end this and get your shipping address, and I will have a T-shirt in your size, and you pick the color shirt mail to your home address yeah let's do a second one let's do a second t-shirt let's see another question another question based on another topic okay Let's do, okay, let's do one about, I talked about the army. I talked about um, what, this is the final shirt that I'm going to give away tonight. Um, let's see. With the army. List these two things. What is a army soldier's lifeblood while stationed statewide in the u.s or wherever your statewide base is and what is your lifeblood whenever you're stationed overseas like in afghanistan first person to answer those two what was our our lifeblood stateside and our lifeblood overseas what was it got to name both of them first person to name both of them First person named both of them. We got one person who who named one of them. But I need both of them. 
What was our lifeblood? What drinks were our lifeblood? I'll even be more specific. Still waiting. I got one person who answered one of them. <laughs> Boobs in the ass. Yeah, there's a... Mm. You ever seen Army Girls? Yeah. No, you, you, mm, mm, mm. Alfred Wilson, close enough. Jack and Rip It. The correct answer was um, like deployed overseas. It's Rip It. Stateside, it is alcohol, is our lifeblood. So, Alfred Wilson, you are the winner of the second t shirt. If you would, right now, in the comment section, um, post your e email address for me so I can take a picture of it with my phone so I know how to get in contact with you to get your shirt size and shipping address. Because once I close this video, the live comment section will vanish. Fuel and ammo. Good guess, though. Fuel and ammo. But the fuel would most likely be... Uh, there it is. Email address. Boom. Okay, I'll, I'll hit you up there. So, giveaway night. Two giveaways. <laughs> Technically, class six and rippets. Technically, yeah. But, you know, I got to take the first one. Jack and rippet. You know. Yeah. So, that was fun. Did an hour live stream, gave away two t-shirts. I will contact those two people right after this. Get your shirt size, what shirt color you want, shipping address. So if you watched it this far, either live right now, or if you're watching it later on on YouTube, whenever I do live streams, from time to time, I'll do giveaways. Kind of like this. You know, it makes it fun. So that's going to wrap it up. Thanks, everybody, for coming on with me tonight live. Thank you for all the questions. Thank you for the interactions. Thank you for, you know, talking to me and um, support the military. The earth is not flat no matter what anybody tells you. And uh, I'm out.